Welcome to Multifamily Deal Lab, where your host, Dave Lindahl, dissects recent multifamily deals done by his guests. Dave will extract what went right, what went wrong, and a number of key takeaways so your next deal may be more profitable. All right, everybody, welcome to Multifamily Deal Lab. This is uh, where we dissect deals, and I am with Glendon Logan. And Glendon, tell everybody who you are and where you're from. Oh, hi, I'm Glendon Logan. I'm originally from Jamaica in the West Indies, down south of Cuba. And yeah. um, I immigrated to the U.S. in 2012. I'm an engineer by training, been working in metal and aluminum, steel, and uh, mining industry. And uh, reasonably good job, well-paid job, but... I, my father was a builder, a construction builder, he built houses, and I got here in the U.S. and I wanted to get into houses. And then after exploring, I realized that multifamily is better. So I signed up with Ari Mentor, and here I am exploring the market and the opportunities. Awesome. Did your father hold any properties or did he sell them all? He sold them all. I held properties there. I had a 10-unit complex that he helped me to build. And then when I moved here, I let go of it. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, so you have a little bit of experience investing in multifamily properties in Jamaica. Yes. Uh, that's interesting. How are, the, how are the laws different there in terms of, say, the tenant laws, the buying and selling of the properties? How do they compare to the U.S.? They are very relaxed. They are, they are relaxed and um, the market is young. You can look at it as it is not as mature as it is here. And um, it's easier to kick a tenant out and stuff like that. If they don't pay, you can just kick them out because they can go live on the beach, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. you've got, this is your very first deal. It's an unusual yeah. first deal. Uh, so let's talk about it. Tell everybody what you bought. Okay, so I bought a six-unit mobile home park, and it's a park where the landlord owns the trailers. It's not a pad system, the usual pad service system. It's one yeah. where you own the trailers. So I got it with six units. The seller was... Um, progress into bigger deals. So it was letting go of uh, some small deals. And I got in on the bottom because if I had gotten in earlier, I sure would have taken other deals from him. He had some du squad and duplexes also that he let go of. So I saw this one and I held on to it. So um, is this deal in your backyard or how did you come across this deal? Well, I was searching on Crixit, and that's when I saw the other deals. And I called call up the broker who introduced me to the young man who was selling the, this property. And it is actually more than a almost two hours drive from my house. It's here in North Carolina. Okay. It's so north of um, Charlotte. So... Uh, mobile home parks um, are are underwritten the same as apartments. I've had a lot of people Correct. come through our uh, mentorship program and multifamily millions training and go out and buy mobile home parks instead of apartments. So that's not actually not unusual all through the years. Um, so on this particular deal, though, what was the asking price? He was asking three hundred thousand dollars for the park six unit. Mm -hmm. I looked at it. And I offered him two hundred and seventy-five, and he what, came back and. What did you base that twenty-five thousand dollar haircut on? Uh, based on the, he advertised it with a twelve percent over twelve percent. He said greater than twelve percent cash flow, and I, oh. <laughs> he, I asked him for his rent roll. Yeah. So his rent roll was very patchy. He could not deliver on that. And when he sent it and I looked at it, I said, to get it over 12%, I have to go to 75. And he said, no way, it would not go any lower than 295. 
Hmm. So I said, let me take a look. And I went out, take a look and interview, you know, interact with the tenants. And then I came back and I said, okay. There were a few units that needed some repairs, some work done to them. And he said that that's built into the price. So we look at it and we agreed on 290 and he will fix number one unit, which was the worst of them all. Worst of them all. So, okay. So you agreed on 290, the cash on cash returns to you. Are, were you paying cash for this or were you getting financing? So he would give me a hundred thousand dollars Stellar's finance, which I'm where, still paying at the moment. Where's the rest of the money coming from? And I'm um, using my personal money. So when I joined Harry Mentor and I, we went through the classes, we talk about um, you should be ready to pay the earnest money or have something put aside ready just in case you have to put some earnest money to secure a deal while you're analyzing it. So I put some cash away. <laughs> In just in case, I, you know, while I analyze deal. So I took that, my earnest money, <laughs> cash, and put it into this deal. So on this type of a deal, what type of expenses do you typically have? They are close to nothing. They are just a few legal expenses. The closing cost, given that I was not taking a loan from an institution, there was no closing cost there. There were... A sharing of the legal fee, I paid about five hundred dollars. Well, what about the what about like the monthly monthly expenses? You got trash, right? Oh yes. Oh, okay, I was talking about clothing. Here I have trash, and we actually got the water is coming from a well, so I just have a oh. well pump maintenance. And twice per year, the city do a water quality test, which is mm -hmm. very minimal. The well pump, the seller. Had a new pump he purchased and had it in a storeroom, and he installed. I got him to install that pump also at the beginning there. That's a part of the agreement we came to. So I got a new pump installed, and um, no water bill. I have a common era light, which turns out to be very low. It's I had budgeted. He said budgeted. I should have budgeted about seventy five dollars. I went to the utility company, realized that he never paid more than $50 any month. And no. since I had it, my bill, I put in LED lights, my bill is just um, $28 per month. But nice. So um, these, uh, the trailers have uh, separate meters? Yes. Do they have like a, pays. So do they have like a, um, a telephone pole out like back and that's where they put the meter or where do they put the meter? Okay, so the meters are actually at each trailer. Yeah. And um, they go into like a individual a, bill. They go into a slot in the trailer? They're built yes. like for a meter? Oh, yes, it was built that way. Yeah. All right, and what about heat? It's heat pump here in North Carolina, so it's electrical, so they pay for their own heat. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so it the, the cost is um, lawn care which um, it's not all year round. Now I'm doing it every two weeks. We're cutting the grass now. Mm -hmm. um, garbage trash, which is um, pay on a monthly basis, and it mm -hmm. is relatively cheap here also. And then the common year light, the water is basically free. It is on the electric bill. So it's two bulbs and one water pump. So with all of that, so yeah, that's that's very that's very minimal fees, and you could actually, you know, your next deal, you probably scale that up. Um, yes. So what's your cash flow? Oh, my cash flow right now is four thousand twenty-five dollars per month, which is um, what around forty-three for. You know, did you do the calculations to determine what if you got a mortgage on the property? Um, what that would be, what your payment would be? Yes, I did. And um, it, it, was, it was coming out pretty good. My payment would have been, um, I have it here. My payment would have been, I did if I had done it over 20 years, my payment would be just over, um, sorry. 
We have been seventeen thousand dollars per year, which is about eleven hundred dollars. Yes, month. right. So <laughs> that is why I go with the seller's finance and do it over one year and come back to the same payment. So, are you going to refinance the deal? Refinance, uh, yeah, refinance the deal and pull your cash yes, back out, so pay off the seller. Exactly. So the the plan, the deal I made with the seller is one year. Um, amortized over seven. Um, one year to close the loan. So the end of September will be the one year, and that is when I'm. It's, I should have one year of data stabilized, and that's when I'm looking at doing my refinancing and see if I, given I'm looking at the calendar, looking at the economic climate. I said, if I can get it refinanced there, I'm looking at my interest rate. 5.9 was the last discussion I had. Percent was the last discussion. I'm using that calculation. And if the market is in the cycle, as taught by our mentor, and we look at it, if it's in that cycle where it's right, that is the decision. That's the way I'm going to see if I can get into another deal. Excellent. Um, so you're going to have approximately 3000 a month in cash flow net net after you pay your mortgage and, and the uh, expenses. Right. I'm doing, um, I'm doing pretty reasonably well on this deal. Um, I have tenant that I have to evict. You might have a miss, but I'm close to like three, five, three, six per month, putting away, preparing for our next opportunity. That's great. Um, so who finances something like this? Okay, I spoke with, um, I, his name slipped me now, um, at our mentor, one in my, I have a contact deck, which I built since started with our mentor. Yeah. And he said, get the information together, get the cash flow of all your documents, and we will analyze it and see what is available. But, but he said that he can find someone who would finance it. Oh, and he did. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Uh, well, you, you know, okay. And uh, the, the another answer to that question is typically uh, a credit union. Right. You know, where, yeah, wherever the, the whatever the city is in, every city pretty much has a credit union or close. And they, this is a credit mm -hmm. union deal for sure. Yeah. And the local bank. So I opened an account with a local bank here. Yeah. And they, they seem receptive, but I'm not ready. So I'm not looking at refinancing at the moment with them. What um, what was unusual about this deal? Oh, the, by, uh, by the way, I got to tell you a story about the yeah. first time I was in Jamaica. <clears throat> so uh, this is years ago. And I was with my best friend, Rob, who I started uh, investing in apartments with. And uh, we probably had like three or four deals. They were all three to six unit properties. We were still pretty much poor, but we but we started making money. So like we started making money. Let's go to Jamaica, right? So we go to go to Jamaica, and back then I negotiated everything because I didn't have money to buy stuff, you know. Yeah. So um, they have you know those beautiful wood carvings down there. Mm -hmm. So um, I checked all the shops and I found the one that I want. All I could afford was one. I I found the one I wanted. It was like a fish. It was this big. It was flat, but it, it stood up, and it was just beautiful. And uh, they wanted it was I think it was ninety dollars that was the asking price. So um, when I was talking to Rob, I said, yeah, I said, I'm going to go back for that fish. I said, but I'm not going to pay any more than $50 for it. And he said, oh, okay. So we went in and we started going back and forth, right? And like he was, that guy was a really hard negotiator. Uh, so uh, we, I started at, at 35. And he's like, no, no, man, no. He says, you, you got to pay $80 for this, 80 And I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to pay 80 The most I'll pay is, is 40 and uh, he says, uh, no, no, man. And then we go back and forth, back and forth. But to make a long story short, right, we we're at 45. I had him at $45, right? And I so I tried to do the walkaway close. So I said, uh, listen, if I can't get this for $45, I'm walking out that door right now. And he says, no, man, no. He says, you get $50, 50 And uh, I says, nope, when I start walking, right? And Rob turns to me and he says, Dave, you said you would pay 50 for it. Why not just take it? <laughs> and that guy <laughs> smiled so bright. Yeah. <laughs> I just looked at him like, oh, damn. Oh, man. Yeah. So I pulled the 50 out of my pocket. Like, here you go. Yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it blew it for me. Yeah. So, um, 
I, I forgot what question I asked you. you okay. said what was unusual about the deal? Oh, yeah. What was unusual about this deal? Yeah. Um, because all the classes we had there were talking about, you know, multifamily. I was thinking it's not brick and mortar, so to speak, you know? And I was saying, ah. Then I went and I realized the seller was a little not, at, uh, not as organized as I thought he would have been. Because yeah. I had to get the history on the records on the utility, the light bill. I have yeah. to get to the trash company. And I'm using the same trash company now. They are very reasonable and oh. very cooperative. So that brings up a good point. So he didn't have any due diligence? No, he didn't he, have he didn't a lot you with any So right. you, you had to go and, and create it. So yes. basically you went to the trash company and got the bills. Did you need to get his uh, like sign off on that? But what would they just give you the history of the property? He, I called them up and they instantly assumed that I was he. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I continued with that. They got me the information. Then I spoke with him and let him know. And he called them and because he was supposed to call him to give them permission to talk with him, but he did not. You know, what happened? He was in the middle of getting married at the time. Oh. So he wanted to close this deal to move on to his wedding and go on his honeymoon. Yeah. Which he ended up having to delay a month because of what was happening with his life. So yeah. I got the information. I called the power company. I called the trash people. And the people who were taking care of the lawn, when I got there, it was like three feet tall grass around. Wow. Just the driveway you had. And I said, aren't they concerned that snakes might be inside the area? You know? And they had like sod in the yard that they prepared to spread for the spring and it was now summer was ending. And they still have it there, etc. So all these things I, I got him to address most of the even that got him to spread and remove excess and guard pick up the yard. So when I did that, even the neighborhood was saying, Oh, it is looking nice, thanks. Uh, we're happy to see that someone is cleaning up the area. No, that's good. Um, yeah. and what, so I went what, in. I was going to say, what about rent collections? Because you said this is about two hours away from you. So what are you doing about rent collections? No, I start using Tenant Cloud. It allows you to even pay your rent with a credit card, a bank, any bank account, credit card, etc. And then there I have two vets, an older guy and a younger one. And they just buy money orders and post them to me. Excellent. And so then you don't have to, you don't everybody have to else uses for any rents. Cloud. Sorry? You don't have to go out there for any rents. How often, no. How often do you visit the property? <laughs> okay. Um, I usually go every other month. I end up not being there for the last, I was supposed to be there last month. I didn't make it. But I'll be going this month again. But every other month, I have a, repair guy on call yeah and um we have meeting every so we have a phone conversation every sunday afternoon and we do monthly written report and um he, we discuss if a job like the main water line broke we discuss yeah. it online um i got myself a lowe's card where i could order parts at lowe's and he could pick it up oh excellent and do the work What's the what's the most common maintenance request for uh, a park, um, uh, this mobile home park? Okay, the water flow. Sometimes I got a few of those, and then the biggest thing is a breaker that trips. Then I realized oh. that things were undersized and so forth. Like I install a new water heater, which he had in. He had a storeroom, and he had water heater, the water pump, and a few things in there. Yeah. So I decided to use them up. And the breaker was underside. You change a breaker. You have um, a raccoon went under one of the trailer and threw up all the cables. <laughs> so oh, I have man. to rewire one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, raccoons are. Uh, I get I get raccoons around my area a lot. They try to get into the eaves of the house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um. All right. So you had to. Let me see. So you, so when you said water flow, is that, does that mean that the water flow is low? No, it's high. The pump was set at very high pressure. So oh, it's it coming out too fast? Oh. It's, yeah, because it's a well and we had a pump on it. 
and it blew out a section. So three of the units were without water and had to address that quickly and so forth. So, uh, so what is in the future for you? What's your next deal? Well, I'm trying to get something, say, I look at it with two folds. If it is 30 units, 20 to 30 units where I can go by myself, and I'm also looking at a hundred plus unit where I can partner up and, you know, underwrite it and present it to Jermaine with my coach before and yeah. have that one um, syndicated and so forth. So th that's the two ways I'm looking at it. Well, you're certainly in a good area in the Carolinas. You know, yeah. uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. It's growing really fast. I think of, uh, I was just reading a report. Um, I forget who put Oh, I think it was Globe Street. Globe Street just put out a report for um, uh, the areas that were growing fastest. And Carolina was there. <laughs> Phoenix was there. Charlotte, Raleigh, Phoenix. Um, uh, there was one other. I forget what it was. But yeah, good area. All right. Yeah. What, what was the last, uh, if you could recommend any book that you've read, what would, what would be that book and why? You know, the last book I read was The Four Agreements. Oh, yeah. You know that book. Okay. I do. Tom, good I, book. Tom Brady reads that every year. So when I heard that, I, I got it and read it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know. So um, that book helps you to do some introspection and help you to make four agreements with yourself. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it helps to shape how you view the world and other people. It helped to mold you as a person. So that was the that was what the last book I read. Before that I read the book, and I think it was your book with the people from different oh, backgrounds in life. Yeah. Right. Inspirational. And, uh, yes. And mm -hmm. um that one the story of that guy who was on drug went to prison. Oh, that one yeah. stood out more than the rest to me. <laughs> Rob Roswell. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's an insiders club. Just saw him uh, a couple weeks yeah. ago in San Diego. He builds houses now down in, uh, uh, down in Mexico for, for people yeah. that don't have houses. Um, and okay. he's, just, he's an awesome guy. He just keeps doing it. He yeah. just keeps, he just keeps giving back, you know, that's a, so for, for those that aren't familiar with Rob, uh, Rob, uh, Rose Roswell, I, uh, I always mispronounce it, but it's Roswell. And uh, so he ended up on heroin. And if you end up on heroin, you typically either end up in prison or you end up dead. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up in prison. And then he was born again, uh, changed his life around, found a good woman when he got out. Um, mm -hmm. And then he started doing some uh, auto mechanics. Uh, he bought an mm -hmm. auto mechanics shop. Yep. And then he started yeah. buying multifamily, came through here about 2006 mm -hmm. and, you know, remained you know, always coming to the events and, He's owned a lot of apartments and he's right. buying a bunch more, sold off all his auto mechanic shops. And uh, he's just, uh, he's a yeah, great guy. He's a lot of fun to be yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. And then so the come, to, come, to, come to Ultimate Partnering and you'll see him. You'll see him there. By the way, if anybody's interested in ultimatepartnering.com, that's going to be in San Diego uh, this year. So Ultimate Partnering, uh, ultimatepartnering.com. Um, you can find out information there. But Rob will be there. Rob, are you going? Glendon? Yeah, I registered from last year. You'll be. Oh, excellent. Yeah, good. Yeah, so we'll see you there as well. All right, well, this has been another edition of Multifamily Deal Lab. This is how we dissected this six-unit mobile home park, an unusual deal, but it doesn't matter what type of deal you get to get started. You just got to get started. You get that first deal done, and then the momentum starts, and before you know it, you get three, four, you're five, you're three, four, five deals deep, and then you're like, oh, my gosh, I got to get more systems in place because I'm, I'm growing too fast. But it's that first deal that's the most important deal. Uh, and it just doesn't matter what size it is or what it is. It's just you get in the game. You're over the hump. You're on the other side of the fence. The difference between those people that haven't done a deal yet and those people that have done the deal, it's getting over that fence because it doesn't matter how high you climb to look over that fence. You'll never understand what the experience is like until you have a deal under your belt. And once you get that deal under your belt you know, and you're over that fence, it's like the whole world opens up. The pressure's off. Um, it, you know, you have a lot more confidence in yourself. You know the system works. You start 
Uh, you portray that confidence to the brokers, the property managers, your your investment partners, and you just start moving, 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 moving. That story plays itself over and over again in the 21 years that we've been teaching people. And it happened to me. It took me nine months to do my first deal. Scared stiff. Got my best friend Rob to buy it with me because I figured if I was going down, I better take somebody with me. And then within three months, we had three more. Within six months, we had nine. Within the first year, we had 11. And then uh, we're off and running to 9,000 units. All right. So that's another edition of Multifamily Deal Lab. See us next week and uh, we'll do it all again. Bye, everybody. This has been another edition of Multifamily Deal Lab. If watching on YouTube, please be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, so you don't miss the next session and review the contact links on this page.